So today we're going through just guard retention, uh, particularly for around the legs passing. We'll see how much we can get to for uh, how much we get through on this. Yeah. So first thing, like actually, let's just go, just take a step back. So like you, if you're on your back, you know, generally. Uh, if there's no grips at all and there's enough distance to, you'll actually prefer to be seated, okay, to get grips, right? Because when I'm on my back, Brian kind of gets to make the first grip and then I'm like trying to counter off that, which is, you know, I can do a good job there, but it's usually better if I'm seated to, to be able to like control his hands, but I can win the first grip now. And then it kind of depends, you know, if you win, if you get good grips, it's now you're attacking. We're not really thinking so much about retention, but getting to good position to attack. Okay. Which might be that you stay seated, or you might use those grips to kind of fall onto your back and start attacking from there. Okay. But sometimes, like you know, you're seated and you get tilted back for whatever reason, or you've just recovered out of a spot, and and sometimes it's just you know you feel like it's a safer thing to do at this point in time to stay on my back. Okay, so. Uh, in particular, if he's kind of crowding me a little bit, I don't want to try and sit up because I give a lot of space. You know, he can take grips while I'm getting up, right? So that's when I'll be on my back, right? Um, while there's no major connection, then I tend to want to have my feet, my knees close to my chest, okay? I'm, I'm first just trying to not give up like an obvious big gap which my opponent can exploit. Right, so like if you start reaching for your opponent like out here, then there's a, I've made a big gap between my knee and my shoulder. So go again, you know, Ryan pulls that across, starts to step around. He's going to start to pass into that gap. Okay, so by keeping that gap closed, if he does happen to go around, you know, steps around, there's still like there's something in the way to to block that. Okay, so when there's no grips, we tend not to stretch ourselves out too much. You can kind of like do circular motion. So like if I'm looking for grips, like I can kind of do this this windshield wiper action, but my knees are kind of staying reasonably tight. Don't stretch your feet out like this. Right. Now, once you have grips, that's a bit different. Okay, so like, let's say I've got a collar and a sleeve. I'm, I'm now attacking. Sure, I can like stretch him out. It's actually affecting his posture. And because I'm holding his arms, he can't just like clear my, my legs, but otherwise I'm preferring to keep my, my legs tighter. Yeah, right. So you probably, you know, if you are on your back, your opponents, you know, often, you know, they're, we're going through, like they're gonna try and pass around, like the legs to the left or to your right, okay. Um, I want, I'm, I'm expecting him to win the first battle for like gripping the legs, okay. But I can still put my feet in a way that makes it somewhat difficult to, to actually get around. Okay, so if he's looking to grab my legs, I'm looking to put my feet on the biceps, okay. Biceps is ideal. Uh, it can be like, you know, different parts here, but generally like somewhere around the biceps because now he can't, like if he just tries to run around to the side, it should be, I should be able to just follow. Okay, I can, wherever he goes, my, I can keep that same position. And while we're doing that, I'm of course looking to to get my own grips here and, and start to, you know, now it's, I'm on the attack now, right? So, if we're looking for, for biceps, if you, you know, it's not wrong, it is actually, I'd say it's more wrong <laughs> if you start looking for like hips first, okay? Because here it's, it's reasonably easy to clear, right? You can clear that and begin to pass at the same time. The bicep he can clear, of course, he can circle, but he, he hasn't like gained too much ground by doing that. So we're gonna end up in this like kind of pummeling thing where he's gonna circle the foot off the bicep and I'll be circling my foot back okay, like this. Right? Always trying to win that space. And that's just a, a battle that can go on. And while that battle's going on, you're looking to establish other grips and, and get a position that starts to go in your favor. Okay. Um, so generally, usually they'll circle by coming inside like this, controlling your leg, and you'll have to circle underneath come back. If you can't go under, sometimes they grip like you know, too much, like I can't go under, usually you can swing your foot over the top. You almost like chop through their, their forearm to get back to the, to the bicep, okay? You can extend your knee, like when you've got this, it's okay if your knees are a little bit away from your chest because there's no immediate danger of him getting past. Unless he's cleared that, uh, once he starts to clear my, my feet, go the other one as well, okay, I'm starting to bring my, my feet back. Okay, until I win that battle again, because I don't want 
him to clear it, have this space available to pass him to. Okay. So just a simple drill to, to start out with. You're going to have feet on your opponent's biceps, your knees reasonably close, right? And Ryan's going to circle, and every time he does that, we're just like playing a little battle to, to win the grips. Yeah. Okay. Have your partner. Let's go. Uh, look, there's different ways they're going to try and deal with your legs. I'll just we're just going to cover one other way first, just while he's in front of me, and then we'll deal with him when he actually starts to run around. Okay. So uh, one thing your opponent might do is. And we'll just have, for now, just have your partner kind of staying there and throwing your leg across um, just to get used to this because if they're running around to the side, it's, it's going to be slightly different. Okay, so if he's here, he grabs my leg and he throws my leg this way. Okay, so obviously this is not good if this happens. Okay, now I'm, I've got my back exposed. When Ryan wants to pass, he can. Okay, so. so generally, like we're doing this pummeling, if they happen to get like a grip on the outside like that and throw the leg, we're going to want to do what's called a crossover. Okay, so I swing my outside leg to this bicep like this, okay, and it turns my hips to face him as well. So by doing like, you watch this, by swinging my, I'm facing this way, when I swing this leg, it turns my hips to face the other way, okay. Again, right here, Ryan goes to throw the leg, I can do a crossover. Once you've got that, so we're just meeting the bicep now with our, with our opposite leg, okay. We do that, we put our foot back. We're back in line. Okay, so we're just going to do that pummeling again. Our opponent's going to throw the leg. Okay, we go crossover. We go back to that pummeling. Okay, like so. Okay. Now, one thing you'll need: make sure your arms aren't like this. Your elbows on the ground actually give you a little bit of like um, base. To, like I can move my hips well because my elbows are like giving me a bit of support. Okay, if my arms are you know in the air or not supported on the ground much more awkward trying to move your hips. So just kind of have your elbows on the ground here. We don't need to be like reaching up for grips just yet. All right, person on top circling. Okay, they throw your leg, crossover. Okay, keep going. Okay, and you can be pretty early with that. If you recognize the, the going to throw, the earlier the better. Okay, let's go. Okay, so that's kind of, we've been dealing with someone who's kind of in front of us trying to like circle grips and um, and potentially throw our leg to the side. Our posture's been knees to the chest. If we get our feet in position, we can we can get our grips. Okay, like we can't be, we haven't really practiced that, but you can be looking for your grips. And if they start, uh, generally my elbows otherwise are like on the ground in case they try to throw my legs to the side. It gives me a bit of stability for it. to work the crossover. Come back. Okay. So another thing that might happen. Ryan manages to circle, he controls my legs, and he's got good enough control that he can start to run around. Okay. And there's a few different things. Look, there's a lot of different things he can do from here. Very basic is like he either like puts his shoulder in and drives in to pass, or he'll otherwise he'll often step his right leg in okay, to like a neon belt. Okay. We'll have to respond to these slightly differently. Okay. But probably the main thing is like so this, this time, instead of trying to like turn me and push my legs to the side, this time he's kind of kept my legs where they are and he's starting to go around, right? So I now, it's really important that we get a frame, okay? I need, to, I need to get this frame to stop him closing the gap. We'll look at that shoulder coming in first and I'm just, I'm usually here, I'm just waiting for that shoulder and I don't want to block it, okay? It has to be a straight arm frame like this. So when he tries to put his weight through that, okay, I can actually like, yeah, it's just going through my my bone into the ground. There's not much strength having to to be used. Okay. If you catch it like late, this is, here he'll just like crush it. Okay. If you've got like a bent arm, they'll just beat that. So you have to be early you know, when I'm defending guard and they start to pass. It's like very early with my my frame going to that shoulder. Okay. And this is probably the main thing I want you guys to get when we do the live training. Just make sure you're very early with your frame. Okay. Just turn it off, yeah. So the frame, so the frame gives me room, like with an outstretched hand, unless you're like quite inflexible, you'll probably have enough room to start getting your feet back into that space. Okay. If it's an outstretched hand, it's going to make quite a bit of distance. So as long as you can like pummel your foot, either foot back like past the line of your hand, you've got a decent chance of, of recovering here. Okay. So as he goes around, we're here. Okay. Now, what am I doing to, I, I want to, 
I want to eventually get my feet back to the bicep and back into good position. And just circle that way. That's okay. yep. and pressure. So I want to get my, you know, it's usually, it can be either leg actually. Either leg can come back onto the to the bicep. So if I see room, my, my right foot will just come back. Okay. If that one's really blocked, then I try to get my, my left leg back. And it can go, you know, over the top or underneath, just like before. Whatever pathway feels uh, available to you. Okay. I want, again, on, with my left hand, don't grab at things because I'm very tiltable without that elbow on the ground. If he tries to tilt me this way, I'm going to get turned. Okay. I can't face away from him and get my legs in. So I put my elbow on the ground and I usually hold my knee like this. And my hips have to be rolled back. Okay. Your hips are like down here and I grab my knee, this won't work. You can just fold me. Okay. So I want to be like this. Okay. Try and turn me this way. Right. Okay. There's a very strong structure to stop it. Okay. So I've got my frame, I frame my own knee so that I can't get turned and this gives my feet a better chance of coming in. Right. Usually just a little roll of the hips in the air. So I kind of do like the initial, the beginning of a back roll. Okay, head moves away and I can pummel my feet back into feet on biceps again. Okay. So again, Brian goes around. This is what I'm looking to do. Okay, let's get back to yeah, he goes the other side. Okay. Yeah. And I'm back. Okay. Nice and slow. He goes with the shoulder in. I frame the shoulder, elbows on the ground. Okay, I frame my own leg so it can't turn me. Okay, and if it's hard to like hold my leg so I can't swing it, so yeah, hold this one tight. He's got a lot of pressure on that. I can't get that in. Right. When you roll your hips back and tilt your head away, you'll usually be able to get that leg back in. Okay, so kind of like let's go that. So, so my head's going this way, and my hips are coming up, and you'll see it kind of like helps pummel your leg back. Let's try that. So guys, sometimes, and it's a good counter, you go to the shoulder, so like Brian goes around, I frame his shoulder, but then he changes to go with his knee instead. So like my shoulder blocked him coming in and closing the gap, but he's changed so that his knees come in. Okay, so mostly, actually this is mostly still just blocked by having your inside knee, like, you know, that. okay, when I frame, I'm trying to make it no space to come in anyway. So he goes again. All right. You should find that very hard to to get that knee in, like in that space anyway. Okay, but if someone does manage to get their knee in, so they may just step here. Okay, then we're going to push the leg, right? Turn our hips away and roll our hips in front. Of the leg. Okay, so basically the problem is he stepped outside my hip. Yeah, just go down belly. Yeah, he stepped outside my hip here like this. I'm going to push on his knee. I have to turn away a little bit and I try and swing my leg, my hips back on the front side of the leg. Okay. Steps around again okay. and I'm back having my leg lift. Okay. So he goes around with his shoulder, okay. I block, he steps in. Okay. There I didn't even need to push off his leg but if you, if you feel you need it you can push off the leg. Okay. So again here, steps in, push off the leg and swing your hips back in the middle. Now, one thing I want you to try to notice is pretty much throughout all of this, I haven't been putting my feet on the ground to hip escape, okay? When you put your feet on the ground to hip escape, hip escape is how we escape side control and mount and so on. We're already in a really bad spot. So it's like, I don't need to worry about him controlling the space between my shoulders and my knees because he already has it, right? he's already done that. So I can use my feet on the ground to make space and get back, okay? But when when I've been protecting this space, he starts to pass, and then I start putting my feet on the ground, I just give him a chance to pass. So, don't try, like when someone's going around your legs, don't go like, <clears throat> see a lot of that, you know, as, a, as like a reflex way people try to defend. Okay. Try to be a lot more like, spin on your back, keep your knees tight. So, Brian's going around, I'm going to here, okay. And I'm making it difficult to, to get into that space, but using frames, using movement, and pumps. All right, so what we're gonna do, we'll just do like 60% resistance. So not going crazy, no one's kicking anyone in the head. <laughs> Person on top, your aim is to try to pass around the legs. Okay, so you can do whatever you want. You can make up new things that you didn't. 
talk about. Okay, person on bottom, don't let them. Always just keep trying to get your feet back in front. If they do pass, swap top to bottom. Okay, let's go. Okay. 